Hey there team, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my review of mouthwashing. So this is a fairly short game actually, I beat it in one sitting in about two and a half hours and it does fall into that, oh I don't know, choose your framing, avant-garde, interactive fiction think piece or maybe sort of pretentious, barely a game type area. It's going to come down to personal interpretation. So I'll do my best to categorize it on that kind of sliding scale. And then you can figure out where you sit. But yes, very short, one sitting. It did hold me, though. It was fairly uh, gripping in a kind of understated, subdued way. Like, it wasn't trying to shoot the moon. It wasn't shooting its shot going for something super pretentious. I mean, I suppose you could call it a bit more of a slow burn. And that's what I appreciate the most about at least two thirds of it is, and I don't want to talk about the themes too much because that's all it's really got going for it. It's very thin on gameplay. But what is there is actually fairly grounded. A couple of twists and a bit of foreshadowing. In the final kind of act especially, it really does sort of go off the rails in so far as it leans very heavy on kind of abstraction. Think more like dream sequence kind of stuff, which I don't really love those sort of things, you know, where it becomes less about actual tangible the dude turned the doorknob and the door opened and it becomes more into, like I said, abstract interpretive, non real reality stuff. So that's probably my biggest complaint about it, but it was cool. It was it was interesting. It's kind of miserable, so it's not exactly going to make you super happy. But in this space, whatever you want to call it, walking sim narrative and shorter experiences, I think it does quite well. Uh, a close comparison can't be avoided, which would be I Am Your Beast. We covered that a couple of weeks ago. And same sort of story. That was about two and a half hours one sitting. However, in that game, it was a lot less heavy handed on the I'm trying to tell a story kind of aspect and more an actual game with a really good loop. I use that as a touchstone because if you ha did pick that up and you checked it out and maybe it was a bit too much, um, you, you're definitely not going to like this. So yeah, there's a specific crowd and make sure you know where you sit if you're in here. And if you're not sure and, you know, you're thinking about making the dive, maybe I Am Your Beast would be a good first go. In fact, I've played a little bit of El Paso elsewhere, just a little bit of a tangent, which was the previous game made by the I Am Your Beast guys, and I find that to be a lot more heavy-handed, pretentious, kind of. I think they really hit the formula with I Am Your Beast. But anyway, just, just an example touchstones on ramps and which game that you want to pick up first. So look, the, the broad setup of this is that you're looking at a five man space crew and they're kind of doing like a long freight mission. It seems to take hundreds of days. So I think a couple of years, disaster strikes probably about halfway and then off goes your sort of plot and its impetus. And again, I don't really want to say much more than that because all the character interplay and what happens, it is actually pretty well done. Like I would say whatever, the, what the devs set out to do here, which would be tell a fairly cohesive, uh, not simple, but not overburdened by ego, which is something I find to be the problem in this space. Like I don't think anyone can really get around it, right? I'm, I'm just an idiot that likes playing games like Factorio and automation and belts and that sort of stuff. And I think the further you move up the other end of the scale, and people that want to take themselves seriously narratively and all that, and then they, I suppose, at a certain point cross the line where they go, well, I can write a really important story that needs to be read and be the story of a generation. Like, the closer you get up that end of the scale, the more Dunning-Kruger it often gets where they don't kind of realize that maybe they're not bright enough to pull it off and they overreach and under deliver and I would argue that this not that there's anything wrong with this but that's sort of my main takeaway is that it feels to me that the devs wanted to tell a story with a few points to be made and a few things to think about, um, and they took an appropriate bite of the puzzle. This could also be translated into general gameplay design. Often you see these early access games or AAA games even, they get just so much scope creep, right? They don't stick with the original vision. They have too much crap thrown in and you end up with a million different moving parts that don't really work as opposed to have just a really solid core loop. I suppose this is the narrative equivalent of that kind of analogy. I hope this is making sense. 
Again, a lot of platitudes, talking in vagaries, but what else can I really do other than tell you that I enjoyed it as someone who is a bit sensitive to this sort of medium, but at the same time, to be a bit two-faced, things like Kojima stuff, like Death Stranding, you know, I love that shit, and that is so up its own ass, it's not funny. So yeah, interesting story. A little bit miserable. Who's the good guys? Are there any good guys? I, even saying that is probably too much anyway, but it's not really going to make you feel cheery at the end of it, that's for sure. I do like the aesthetic and the art. It's very cool. It's very, you know, low-poly PS1 sort of thing. Got a dab of alien influence. Some of the uniforms and that really make me think of the Nostromo era aliens setting. And also, while I'm on the less is more, while there are some pretty memorable moments, and this game bills itself as a horror, I wouldn't even necessarily call it a horror. Like, I, it wasn't scary, and I, I suppose I scare easily, but I do play a lot of horror games. Take your pick. But I, I wouldn't exactly call this very terrifying. But it has some pretty cool disturbing, let's call them set piece moments. But I was more like, wow, that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> then, hey, that's what 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 is this game making me do? It's kind of gross, but it doesn't really go hard on the heavy-handed uh, like narrative and writing and uh, being verbose. Again, another pitfall that if you've played any of these sort of games, they fall into, and that's why they blur up against bloody visual novels, you know, which is probably something again you could call distinct where it's people that do huff their farts way too much and you end up with a scenario where they, they look more like, uh, you know, when a film comes out and it's four hours long and it needs to be cut down to be manageable at two hours. I find a lot of visual novels are a bit that way as well. It's walls and walls and walls of text that could be infinitely more concise and get the point across cleaner without wearing out the player. And this game actually does that very well. The dialogue and interactions are fairly sparse. And while, you know, it's going for its cinematic flair, its sort of own touch, I do appreciate that it, it kind of leans more cinema than, um, you know, novel, which is a good move. It's an intentional move. But yeah, I, I would say less is more is a pretty good sort of core tenant of what makes this game work. It tells an interesting story. It's not too bombastic. It's not too overblown with its approach from length to narrative to anything like that to even character development. It's enough. But yeah, be absolutely aware this is pretty much a walking sim. Maybe one puzzle and a couple of interactables, an inventory with maybe three items in it. Like, it is very, very light. And look, I'm not sure I mentioned it, but I'll close out with this thought. Yeah, look, I usually go heavy handed on these sort of games. It depends on the day of the week, I suppose. Steam is a storefront for games and there's an asking price. And I've talked about this before, but if you're going to ask for X dollars, you probably should give X gameplay. But it's also a little bit unfair because one of one of my go to arguments would be a game like this probably shouldn't be on the Steam store because it's not really a game. But the natural sort of flow on from that is, well, where does it go? It's not like it can go on Netflix or anything like that. Maybe it shouldn't be a game. Maybe should, this should have been like a student film kind of thing. They put it on YouTube or, or something like that. But that's the other side of the two-edged blade is that they want to make money for their work and so they ship it as a game. Anyway, my point is it's a tricky thing to navigate and I guess I'm in a mood right now that's a bit more sympathetic than uh, foot stampy laying down the law, which I, I have been known to be when it comes to these very thin games, as it were. But, you know, just a bit of a personal thought on the end. All in all, it's good. It's not going to change your mind. And I think a lot of people that are just not interested in these sort of games will have a look at it and go immediately, well, yeah, no, not for me, not, not even. Anyway, team, I might just leave it there for the time being. I'll catch you guys on the next one.